Welcome back everyone. Our second example here of using the washer method to find a volume by revolving a region about an axis. Uh, so here in this one we've got a region between y equals x squared and y equals e to the x. Um, if you can sort of tell here which one is which, so x squared goes through the origin, so this lower curve here is actually my y equals x squared. And so the one up here that has a y-intercept of 1 is my y equals e to the x. We're going to be revolving the region about the x-axis, so we'll go ahead and put this mark here. We're revolving about that. Um, our interval is 0 to 1, so this line here is x equals 0, and this line here on the right side of the region is at x equals 1. And if I take my rectangle for washer method, remember the rectangle for washer method should always be perpendicular to the axis of revolution, so we would need our rectangle running vertical if our axis of revolution is the x-axis. And so that right there tells us that we are integrating dx, so our formula will be pi times the integral from a to b of the farther radius in terms of x squared minus the closer radius in terms of x squared integrating dx. And again, we decided on dx because of the direction of this rectangle being vertical. Okay, so if you can imagine the solid that we get as we revolve this, we'll go ahead and show you what that looks like real quick. So you can see as this revolves about the x-axis, we get an interesting little hollow section there. We get a little bit of flare to the shape. Um, and as we cut through this solid, we would get, of course, washers as we slice through in every place. Um, and we'll go ahead and then plug into our formula and get our volume going here. So our volume is going to equal pi integral from a to b, so from 0 to 1 here, that's our interval, so we'll say integral 0 to 1. Um, our farther radius, so e to the x is farther from this axis of revolution, so this is my r of x, and my x squared is closer to the axis of revolution, so this is my little r of x, my closer radius. So if we plug in here, we will get e to the x all squared minus x squared all squared dx. And now we'll go ahead and do the little bit of algebra here, so squaring both of these before we do any integrating. So from 0 to 1, if I square e to the x, e to the x times e to the x, uh, or use properties of exponents, we would multiply these things together, so that becomes e to the 2x. Just be careful there. And then x squared squared, so property of exponents there also, we multiply 2 and 2, so that would be x to the 4. And we'll integrate those. So this is an exponential, and this is just a polynomial here, so this one will be power rule. This one will be exponential. So if we integrate, we will get pi times, if I integrate e to the 2x, I get itself, I'm not going to do a u substitution here for the constant. If I were doing derivative of e to the 2x, a 2 would come out, so since I'm doing antiderivative, it's just a constant here. The reciprocal of that comes out, actually one half comes out. Uh, you can do u substitution here if you're not really sure of how to deal with that and you're new to u substitution. Uh, here, so we'll get just power rule x to the 4 becomes x to the 5, and we'll divide by that new power, so it'll be over 5. And we'll be plugging in the bounds 0 and 1. We'll go ahead and scroll down and work this out. So if I plug in 1 first, then I will get 1 half, plugging in 1, e to the 2 times 1, so that would be e squared minus plugging in 1 here, 1 to the 5th would still be 1, so we'll get 1 fifth. So that is what we get when we plug in 1. And then if we plug in 0, it turns out we don't get 0 for every term here, right? If I plug in 0 here, I get 1 half e to the 0. So e to the 0, anything to the 0, right, is going to be 1, so we'll get 1 half e to the 0, which is just 1, so 1 half times 1, and then minus 
0 over 5 there. That one we actually do get 0. So let's go ahead and do a bit of simplifying. We'll get pi times 1 half e squared minus 1 fifth minus 1 half. We could go ahead and uh, get a common denominator here. So this would be 2 over 10. If we multiply top and bottom by 2, this would be 5 over 10 if we multiply top and bottom by 5. So we are going to get pi times 1 half e squared minus 2 over 10 minus 5 over 10 would be minus 7 over 10. Uh, you could go ahead and get a common denominator here if you wanted. I'm just going to go ahead and leave this. I think this is fine. So since it's volume, we'll call this units cubed. And that's our answer for the volume of this solid. All right, we'll go ahead and end there. We'll see you in the next video.